I grew up in Apopka, which is a rural community uh, just outside of Orlando, Florida, as a PK or a preacher's kid. Uh, so my life was very isolated um, and heavily influenced by faith. Uh, so kind of like in a bubble, if you would say. Uh, grew up in church all of my life. And then when I got 18, I decided that I wanted to see what was my version of the big world, which was Atlanta. <laughs> and so I went off to college in Atlanta uh, and lived there for seven years. And during that time, really got to explore like myself, really begin to embrace my, um, my identity as a Black queer man. Um, and then really explore my, my sexuality. Um, but in that, like, I had never had any conversations with my parents about, like, safer sex practices, like using condoms or where to get tested for HIV or other STIs. And so when I was in Atlanta exploring and finding myself, it was just kind of, like, on my own. There really wasn't anybody kind of, like, guiding me or saying, hey, you should watch out for this, or you should think about that. And I remember the uh, winter semester of my junior year, I started to feel, my body just started feeling like a lot different. Um, I'm generally healthy. Um, and so I remember like having constant fevers that just, they wouldn't like go away. Like I would take a Tylenol and it seemed like it would subset and then it would come right back. Um, or like my throat being like really, really sore and swollen. And I just kind of brushed it off as like, oh, maybe I have like a really bad call, cold or like my allergies are acting up or maybe it's like the flu. Um, but it just like kept persisting and persisting and persisting. Uh, and then I remember my spring semester of my senior year is when I really started like getting really, really sick. Um, I had a case of MRSA and I remember the doctor asking me like, when was the last time I had had um, like an STI screening? And I was like, I've never had an STI screening because I had never heard of it. <laughs> uh, and so they did an STI screening and that's when I found out that I was living with HIV the spring semester of my senior year in 2012. Um, and I remember distinctly just kind of like when the physician read the results, like everything just got like really quiet, just like stopped for a moment. Um, and I don't even remember like really how I felt. It was just kind of like a numbness. Um, just kind of like, yeah, just like a numbness of, okay, what does this mean? Um, like, what am I going to do after this? Uh, how is this going to affect, like, my relationships with, like, family and friends and future relationships? Uh, and then I just remember something clicking in the back of my mind that was just kind of like, I want to live. And so I remember saying, okay, what do we do next? Because like, I want to live. I want to be able to live like a healthy, fruitful life. I want to be able to have so many more years of like exploring and finding myself and dealing with heartbreak or falling in love or finding out that I really liked something or I really didn't like something, you know? And I remember them saying, well, if you really want to live, the best thing to do is to, one, get in care and get on treatment. Uh, and so that's what I did. So it's 2020. Uh, I've been living with HIV since 2012. I'm undetectable and I'm thriving with HIV. I'm making sure that I'm staying in care, really having um, transparent and open, honest communication with my healthcare provider about like my journey as far as being adherent to medication, also like discussing other parts of my health. So I'm very much into like homeopathic remedies and natural remedies. And so I really try to be mindful to share that with my provider um, because I feel like that really helps 
her create really a personalized plan for to keep me healthy and for me to keep myself healthy. And then for me, it's also like looking at other things like my emotional and mind health and wellness. So making sure that I'm really being intentional about how I feel and how I'm thinking just as much as I'm being intentional about like what's going on in my body, um, the foods and substances that I put in my body because I only have one. So I want to try and really like keep it um, and maintain it the best way that I possibly possibly can. And then like understanding that my health also enjoy also involves like being happy. So like positive energy surrounding myself around individuals that really kind of like continue to like empower me and uplift me um, and really just make me feel well, good vibes all around. So like when I, when I first started my HIV treatment, um, I remember being told like, set an alarm on your phone or like maybe um, take it during like um, around a activity that you do every day. Um, and then um, there was a great app um, that I, I even still to this day utilize, utilize that keeps me up to date about like, it's time to take your medication. It also um, creates like these progress charts. So it actually shows me like over the course of the week, over the course of the month, over the course of a couple of months, how adherent to my medication I've been. And then it's also great because it provides some resources. Uh, I would say to individuals who have just found out that they're HIV positive, that it may feel very scary. It may feel very daunting. It may feel like the world has just ended, but it's really the beginning. Like you can actually live. I'm like a living, breathing proof of like, you can thrive with HIV. HIV doesn't define me. HIV is not going to define you. You have so much more to live for. Um, and by listening to your medical providers, by taking your medication, you can thrive with HIV as well.